Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the next topic which is characteristics and benefits of a software radio. In the first unit for the subject software defined radio. So the course objective would be that for the first unit. So here we will have an understanding on the evolving paradigm of software defined radio. So in first we will see the characteristics of a software radio. So if you want to implement a ideal software radio, so it requires uh, either the digitization of the antenna allowing complete uh, flexibility in the digital domain or the design of a completely flexible radio frequency front end for a wide range of carrier frequencies and modulation formats. Okay. So at the front end itself we need to have complete flexibility. So this is a block diagram for a practical software radio. So if you see here, first we have the smart antenna. So we will be able to change the characteristics of the smart antenna. And from that we have flexible RF hardware. So wherein we will be able to uh, choose between different uh, options available in the RF hardware. Through So if you see this control, control uh, for the smart antenna for the RF uh, hardware for the ADAC and DAC and for the channelization and uh, rate conversion and for the processing all these controls are through the software. Okay. So after the flexible RF hardware we have the ADC. So in case if it is going to be a receiver from the antenna after the RF hardware we the software radio sample sits at the IF frequencies intermediate frequency range it samples and after sampling so we are converting it into the digital domain so till this point before the adc we have what is called as in the analog domain after the adc we have the uh, signal in the digital domain so that after that uh, it can be configured or controlled or processed in the software itself so being in the digital domain we will be able to uh, process it in the software itself. So channelization and rate conversion is done after which further processing is done uh, in the software through algorithms, middleware or core bar virtual radio machine using the help of hardware. So here the hardware would be FPGAs or digital signal process or application specific integrated ICs. Okay. So then after which it will be the output here it is a receiver. After this receiver it uh, is taken up for further processing. So the uh, path followed by the receiver uh, software radio would be from the antenna through the flexible uh, RF hardware through the ADC it goes this way. So if you are going to use this software radio as a transmitter. Okay, so the path followed is this one. So from the uh, previous device it is going to receive it in the digital domain. So meaning it is to be going to be controlled in the software. So we are going to process using this uh, flexible hardware uh, using the different algorithms defined in the software and we are going to select the uh, what are the channels and uh, what is the rate conversion to be done all those things using the software and then it is going to be fed to a DAC. So digital to analog converter wherein the digital domain will be converted into analog signal. So uh, the R RF hardware based on the uh, configuration it will uh, get the input and it will be transmitted using the smart antenna. So this is the block diagram for a practical software radio. So we will see the details of this. So if it is going to be a receiver, it begins with a smart antenna. Uh, if it is going to be a transmitter, it ends with a smart antenna. So at the uh, final stage. Okay. So the smart antenna, it provides uh, the various gain versus direction characteristics. So we can control the gain and we can control the uh, directional characteristics through software. It minimizes interferences, multipath and noise. Okay. So here the most of the receivers digitize the signal as early as possible. As you have seen, uh, it will be converted from analog to digital at the early stage itself uh, so that it can be controlled in the software. So the received signal is digitized. It is converted from analog to digital at the intermediate frequency band. IF band is used. So if you take a conventional radio, uh, we know about the super heterodyne receiver which is being used. 
So here the antenna picks up in the super heterogeneous system. The antenna picks up the RF signal and it is filtered and amplified with a low noise amplifier using a low noise amplifier and then it is mixed with a local oscillator to an intermediate frequency. So this is how a super heterogeneous receiver works. The IF is intermediate frequency is then mixed to baseband. So when you say baseband, uh, it is at the uh, ones and zeros level as uh, the speed of the uh, data. Whereas in the case of uh, software radio, the digitizing the signal with an analog to digital converter, it is done in the IF range. So intermediate frequency range itself, it is being done. So it eliminates the last stage in the conventional modern, which is uh, mixing into the baseband. So since uh, digitization happens at the IF range itself, uh, what happens is the uh, digital intermediate frequency gives spectral replicas. So which when sampled, it can be placed accurately near the baseband frequency itself. Okay. So digitizing at the intermediate frequency signals gives the spectral replicas so that we can directly get the baseband frequency. The frequency translation and digitization carried out simultaneously. So the translation as well as the digitization are done at the single uh, step. Then the digital filtering, so the channelization and the sample rate conversion need to interface the output of ADC to implement the receiver. So whatever receiver we want. So the output of ADC is fed to the digital channelization and uh, sample rate conversion unit. So as you have seen in the block diagram. So here the uh, interface, uh, sorry intermediate frequency, IF frequency, here it is digitized. So it gives spectral replicas so that we can select the channel, meaning so at the baseband that can be selected here. So the channelization and rate conversion are done at the uh, simultaneously in this unit. So this is done in the software. After this we are going to do the processing. Similarly for the uh, transmitter side, the digital filtering and uh, sample rate conversion needs to, so for the receiver, after the ADC, it needs to do the channelization and uh, sample rate conversion. In the case of a transmitter, the channelization and rate conversion are done, which is being fed to a DAC for the further uh, output. After which, the processing, so if it is going to be uh, receiving, the processing is done in software using digital signal process, uh, FPGS, field programmable gate arrays, or application specific integrated circuits. So for implementing the software, these are the hardware that are being used for the software radio. The algorithm for modulation demodulation may use different uh, algorithms and different methodologies or middleware like common object request broker architecture or CORBA or it could use virtual machines just we use in the case of a Java virtual machine. So the software radio provides a flexible radio architecture changing the radio personality possible in real time with a guaranteed quality of service. So if whatever the functionality we want, we can change the uh, different modes, all those things in possibly in real time. So what they mean by real time is with uh, guaranteed uh, time. Okay, so we will be able to do at real time okay, with uh, guaranteed quality of service. Okay. This flexibility helps to upgrade and market new services quickly. So if you want to have a new feature implemented, we will be able to do that uh, new feature upgrade and it will be able to be marketed. So in the uh, use of a conventional radio, we need to change the hardware. Here, using a software upgrade, we will be able to upgrade and provide new services quickly. So this flexibility in hardware architecture and software provides seamless, seamless integration with multiple networks with different R and data interfaces. So we will be able to interface with different R interfaces, data interfaces uh, using this flexibility in hardware and software architecture. Also, the software radio architecture gives the system new capabilities which can be implemented with software. Say we can uh, have upgrades for interference, uh, interference rejection techniques using a software or you can have going for new type of encryption, uh, different voice recognition and compression techniques, different addressing protocols, 
or a different advanced error recovery schemes all these things can be implemented using a software so this type of system is well suited for 3g and 4g wireless requirements and advanced networking approaches next uh, we have seen the characteristics of a uh, software radio now we will see the benefits of a software radio so the benefits we can categorize into uh, five so they are multifunctionality sorry about that multifunctionality global mobility compactness and uh, power efficiency ease of manufacture ease of upgrades so multifunctionality uh, so it should be able to uh, support different functionality say the short range uh, networks like bluetooth and i to play 802.11 they give a possibility to enhance services of a radio by leveraging other devices that provide complementary service say for example you can have a fax machine so that could directly get connected to a uh, nearby laptop when both have the uh, bluetooth interfaces so a fax machine after receiving a fax it can directly communicate to a nearby uh, laptop which supports uh, bluetooth so you have an additional uh, services that can be implemented because of this uh, different uh, networks then global mobility so you'll be able to support different uh, standards say uh, if in the case of 2g it can support is 136 gsm or is 95 or cdma1 all those things can be uh, supported in a single unit and also the 3g supports many standards umbrella of standards so all those things can be supported using a same system say if you take a mobile phone the mobile phone will be able to support all these things so you can provide global mobility you can take a, you need not switch devices when you go from one country to another country so entire the uh, entire globe you can use the same system so using this concept of uh, software radio uh, the radios are able to operate with all of the above standards worldwide so even in the case of uh, military services so they can have uh, systems which support different uh, standards at one region in the other region so using the software radio we will be able to uh, use it across different branches of military so that you need not change the uh, system when you go from one area to other area or one unit to another unit next topic is compactness and power efficiency so if you take the velcro approach so if you want to implement multi function or multi mode you need to have different types of hardware so that becomes bulky so the hardware itself is very big and also it is very inefficient meaning the power is also uh, power consumption will be more and uh, by all means it will be inefficient whereas in the case of software radio we will have a compact power efficient system so when you have the number of systems increase so uh, even if you have uh, many functions to be implemented this becomes compact and power efficient reason being the same piece of hardware is reused for different uh, functionalities which are being implemented then the next point is ease of manufacture the rf components they are hard to standardize and they have varying uh, performance characteristics since we digitize the signal early in the receiver chain so all the implementation we are doing at the software level so we are reducing the hardware required for implementation so the reduced inventory makes it easier for the manufacturers to procure very less number of uh, hardware and uh, they are able to implement so this gives ease of manufacture putty ease of upgrades so this is a major point so flexible architecture allows for improvements without recall or replacement so if you want to give in a system say for example previously we had only 2g systems if you want to go for 3g we need to have an upgrade so what happens we need to completely go in for a new system uh, so either you need to replace the hardware or they need to suppose if they want to do the upgrade either they will replace the hardware or they go in for recall change the hardware and then they go for replacement whereas in the software radio you need not go for entire replacement okay so for example the vocoders they are constantly improving so if you want to implement something newly it can be directly fielded using a software radio system using an upgrade so the software radio allows new devices to interface seamlessly so from the air interface to the application level with the legacy network 
so uh, whatever existing networks will be able to interface and also will be able to provide new services using a software radio so over the air updates so this is very important so we will be able to provide the updates over the air meaning wirelessly we will be able to up upgrade the system so for speed implementation of software updates and new features so any software upgrade and new feature can be done uh, wirelessly through the uh, over the air or ota updates so these are the benefits of software radio thank you